Learning more effectively is one of these topics that students and teachers are most interested in. Would you like to get to know how to use classical conditioning to learn more effectively and to have a better approach to learning itself? If yes, stay tuned! Hi, this is Bastian Antonovich and on my 5-Minute Psychology channel I talk about psychology, mental health and education. Before I move on, please consider subscribing to my channel if you want to get even more interesting psychological hacks. Whenever I ask my students which aspect of psychology they are interested in the most, they usually say it's learning itself. So many people would like to learn how to learn more effectively and how to make this whole process much more agreeable, much more pleasant and much more successful. So today I'm going to tell you about conditioning, classical conditioning. So what do you see when you hear classical conditioning? This uh, old uh, bearded gentleman called uh, Ivan Pavlov and the dog drooling whenever it hears a bell very good, that's it. But what does it have to do with learning? Well, it turns out, plenty. At the end of the 19th century, a Russian scientist called Ivan Pavlov discovered that whenever a dog sees food, it starts drooling. Surprise, surprise, right? Well, Pavlov also discovered that if the dog hears the bell before seeing the food, after some time, after many repetitions, the dog will start drooling even at the mere sound of the bell without even seeing the food. So what does it have to do with us and with learning? Well, human beings, like dogs, are animals. So some aspects of this theory can also be applicable to us, because this Pavlov's experiment was nothing else but a proof of a learning technique. And even though this classical conditioning was not discovered by a psychologist, it has been used for decades by a branch of psychology called behaviorism. And according to behaviorism, we learn depending on the surrounding environment. So the environment plays a crucial role. And if you are a teacher and if you want to use classical conditioning to make your lessons more effective, the first thing you should do, you should make sure that the environment in which your students learn is pleasant. Why is it so important? Because if they keep coming to the classroom, which is really nice to be in, they will associate this feeling with learning your lesson, with learning your class, with learning your materials. And if a student has to do something stress-provoking, which is really necessary in learning, but in life as well, like, for example, well, showing their homework to the entire group, or let's say that it's a show-and-tell session. It could be stressful to the student, but if the surroundings are pleasant, if the entire environment is really nice to be in, the student will see that there is nothing to be afraid of. And the next time they have to produce something like it again, it will not be as stressful anymore. How about if you are a student yourself? Is there anything you can do about it? Plenty. So, for example, every time you work on your homework or you cram vocabulary at home, make sure that the room you are going to work in is really nice, well lit, pleasant to be in, with plenty of fresh air. If you like it, you can light a scented candle, play some relaxing music or any music that you like. Make sure that you have some healthy and delicious snack in case you get hungry. But classical conditioning is not only about school education. For example, if you work in a company where you have to give presentation in front of a huge audience or perhaps your boss is watching or someone very important in your company, that could be stressful. Is there anything you can do about it? Of course, you can use actually classical conditioning by preparing the presentation and presenting it first to yourself out loud as if you were in front of a huge audience. Later on, 
you can use a mirror to observe yourself when you are presenting. The next step would be to record yourself and then see the recording and check how well you did. And the next step would be to ask someone you totally trust, like a family member you love very much or a friend you trust unconditionally and present this to them. Imagine that they are the audience. And it's not even about getting some positive feedback from them. No, it's just for them being there. If you see, if you feel that nothing bad happens after providing this presentation, it will be easier for you to present not only this one time, but in general, in the future, whenever a situation like this occurs. But one thing is very important. You have to do it repeatedly. You have to do it over and over. You can never stop because if you stop using this trick, after some time it will stop working. So consistency here is of the utmost importance. Consistency and repetition. Let me know in the comments what classical conditioning would you use in the classroom as a teacher or as a student and I'll see you next time.